One day, after a period of tranquility, the dragons launched an assault on humans, sparking a war that would last for 30 years. The dragons' immense strength made it difficult for humans to fight back, and humanity was on the brink of extinction. Despite the odds being stacked against them, Ethan, the hero, kept up the fight against the dragons. He was the oldest son of Duke Arden's family and had a long line of renowned swordsmen behind him. He was renowned throughout the western continent as a dragon slayer and the last hero of the Hydran Empire. Yet even his impressive skills were no match for the dragon king, Dracosith. In his final moments, Ethan recalled his father's last words and his promise to his deceased sister. He felt remorse for not fulfilling his duty. Suddenly, he heard a voice calling him, and when he opened his eyes he realized he was lying in bed. He assumed he had perished in a battle against the dragons, yet he had somehow been returned to his younger self. He attempted to stand, but he felt no energy in his body. He realized he had almost no mana and must have experienced mana exhaustion even after death. Drawing on the power of the spring of life, he allowed the mana to enter his body, giving him the ability to move again. His sister walked into the room and was stunned to find him standing. She warned him not to move, but he assured her that he was mostly healed and could move on his own. She mentioned that the doctor had said he would need at least six months of physical therapy before he could walk again after waking up. He was shocked to find out he had been asleep for ten years. His sister reassured him he was not in the afterlife, and that his other siblings were still alive. He recalled that he had been killed by the Dragon King and had a gaping wound in his chest. His sister then informed him he was now 19 years old, the same year that the dragons had invaded. His father had died 15 years prior, and his family had paid a hefty price to form a non-aggression pact with the dragons. Ethan was surprised and found it strange that they had agreed to such an arrangement. He felt like things were going wrong all around him. Ethan wondered if he had been sent back in time, and pondered why it seemed so different from the past he remembered. He couldn't believe he had been returned to his ruined family. He discovered that the price for their family's sacrifice was immunity from all charges except for treason, and the gold and jewels they received were now being held by the senators, the current acting rulers of the Arden family. The senators had cast the Arden family away to the hunting lodge ten years earlier. After the battle with the dragons when his grandfather and his father passed away, the king had ordered the senate to temporarily rule over the Arden family. King Siegmund must have been worried that Ethan would abuse the immunity and the authority as the patriarch of the family at such a young age. The king had been an idiot in his past life, but this King Siegmund seemed to be even worse. Ethan had been meant to become the patriarch, but the senate objected to it while he was unconscious. He thought that, if he were to become the patriarch, he would expel all of the senate members who had caused his siblings and him so much distress. In eight months, he would turn twenty years old. Ten years ago, when he was around nine, he had worked hard to restore the family's vision technique, which had gone lost with their ancestors. However, he fell unconscious due to mana exhaustion in the midst of restoring the family's vision technique, and his siblings, who had no power in the family, were unable to stop the collateral family's tyranny. At that time, his sister was only ten years old. At that moment, Ethan blamed himself for the ruin of his family, but his sister reminded him that all that mattered was that he was healthy. He was glad to be reunited with his sister, but he was determined to avenge all the people who had caused them harm, from the king who had allowed the senate to strip his family of their power, to the collateral family members who had taken advantage of the chaos and removed them from their position of authority. He believed he had been sent back in time in order to protect his family and restore what they had lost by regaining his strength in the next eight months. He was determined to take revenge on those who had brought them misery. At breakfast the next morning, his sister asked the old man with the grey hair, known as the Grand Chamberlain, to leave. He refused, stating that it was their duty to stay there and they were members of Baron Karga's family, not the Duke's. He had been given strict orders to remain in the lodging. He then mockingly apologized to her. His sister had no choice but to accept that they had no control over their situation and let it go. She then woke up Ethan to have breakfast. As he descended the stairs, he noticed the servants were ignoring them. He asked his sister what was going on, and she told him these were servants hired by other families. He told his sister to eat first, as he was going to talk to the servants and then return. The Grand Chamberlain was planning to send a letter regarding Ethan's awakening but Ethan showed up and punched him in the face. The man was shocked to learn it was the Archduke who had punched him. The man was terrified of Ethan, and told him that even if he was an Archduke, he couldn't be acting in such a way. 
He mentioned that Baron Cargas wouldn't stay still. Hearing this, Ethan slapped the Grand Chamberlain's face and said that the insignificant Baron family wouldn't be able to protect him. He asked Ethan why he was doing this, and Ethan simply replied if he really didn't know. The man thought of the Grand Duchess and yelled at the maids to help her as quickly as possible. Ethan then let him go, telling him to do better, and the Grand Chamberlain bowed and replied that he would thinking to himself that Ethan was mad. He thought to himself that he needed to tell this to Baron Cargas. After facing off with the Grand Chamberlain, he returned to his room to assess his body's condition. He realized that due to the mana exhaustion, the mana was spread throughout his body, but he acknowledged that it would be fatal for an average knight, but not for him, the continent's best. He thought that his body was still in good shape despite not being active for 10 years, but the veins that carried mana were very weak now. He began to repair them step by step, starting with resonance. Resonance is the process in which vibrations go into the mana hole to find the prepared mana's wavelength, and use it to pull mana in the hole. The inside of the hole needs to be filled through this process to completely conquer the mana hole. After stimulating the mana hole, he went outside to work on his stamina, he realized basic stamina was the most essential foundation he needed. The servants were surprised he was training so hard with such a slim body. As he trained, someone called out for the Grand Duchess. He asked the boy who he was, and the boy replied, Young Master Myers is causing a ruckus at a bar again, so if the Grand Duchess doesn't come and stop him. The exhausted boy is inquisitive as to who he is and the fact that he had never come across him before. He couldn't believe that his younger brother, who was so passionate about training and had a rigid schedule, was at the bar making a fuss. He called out to Hans to prepare to go and find his brother. Once they left the house, they arrived at the Golden Pub, where his brother was often seen with some thugs. He and his servant entered the pub, and saw chairs flying. His brother was in a total mess, asking for more alcohol. He couldn't believe it when he saw his brother in this state. He noticed a few people enjoying the scene, and he was infuriated. He smashed the table in half. He recalled that his brother, who was once a reticent individual who lived intensely and battled alongside him, was now a different person. He then put Myers to sleep. Hans called out Ethan and gestured to the two men in the corner, indicating that they had been responsible for messing the youngest lord. The red-haired man was taken aback to discover that the Archduke, who had fainted due to mana rush, was present in the pub. His subordinate asked him what they should do, he replied that they should conclude their activities for the day and not worsen the situation. The red-haired man told Ethan that he was concerned that the youngest lord had been heavily inebriated and that they were leaving. Ethan with a menacing stare queried if they were indeed departing, causing the man to feel a chill. Ethan asked them who gave them permission to leave. The subordinate attempted to block Ethan, but Ethan punched him without a second thought, sending him crashing into the wall. The red-haired man was astounded by what he saw. Ethan declared to them that they had made a serious error by bothering his family, and then proceeded to assault the man. The red-haired man tried to fight back and thought to himself that he can withstand Ethan's magical powers, but he was utterly helpless against him. After slaughtering the boss, Ethan mercilessly murdered all of the red-haired man's remaining subordinates. Hans was sweating in fear as he witnessed Ethan's rampage. He called Hans and commanded him to tidy up the place as he was heading back with his brother. After the incident at the pub, Ethan and Myers had now returned to the lodging. In Myers' dream, he remembered the time when his father had passed away, followed by his mother. Due to being so young, he had no recollections of his parents, so he looked up to his older brother as a source of support and a father figure. Myers jolted awake and shouted his brother's name, as if he were having a nightmare. He recalled the sensation he had experienced the night before, like he had seen his brother. Tears began to well up in his eyes, overcome with remorse for his feelings of helplessness. Ethan came into the room out of the blue, inquiring of Myers if he was awake. Myers was taken aback to see his brother and immediately embraced him. Ethan asked Myers where Taryn was, as his sister refused to tell him. Myers wasn't sure if he should tell him, but he eventually did. He said that Taryn had gone to a different family saying he would learn a different technique. Ethan asked Myers what he meant, but Myers didn't know the details either. In the middle of their conversation Hans interrupted them, he handed the money to Ethan that he collected while wrapping things up at the pub. He gets enough money and give Hans the rest, Hans is very thankful for the generosity of Ethan. He wondered what kind of situation his brother, Taryn, might be in. He was relieved that his brother was still alive, but he had no idea what family he had gone to. He stated that in order to revive the Duke family, 
they must first regain their strength. He then called Myers and asked him to show him his wrists to see if he had been debilitated by alcohol. Upon inspection, he noticed a great amount of impure energy in ordinary mana, which made him think that if he learned the breathing techniques of his family, he would have mana that burned like flames. He told Myers that his body wasn't bad and if he trained from now on, it wouldn't be too difficult for him to become a knight. However, he had to choose between offense and defense. Myers couldn't believe that he still had a chance to become a knight. Ethan reassured him that he knew the secrets of their family and he could help him become a knight if he wished. Myers declared that if he had to choose between offense or defense to become a knight, he would opt for defense in order to protect Ethan and their family. Ethan asked his younger brother if he was ready, as defense would require a great deal of effort. Myers, with a determined look, assured his older brother that he was. Ethan then ordered Hans to bring sandbags and wooden swords. Ethan thought to himself that the ruined family's secret was within him and it was a bit late to start at age 15, but the potential was there so he would raise Myers properly. At the Baron Karga's household, Patriarch Baron Helmet was reading a letter sent by the Grand Chamberlain. After reading it, he learned that the Archduke had awoken after 10 years. He called out to his butler and ordered him to deliver the message to another collateral family, the Count Ferns. The Baron had a thought that Archduke Ethan was talented and in good health, and his eyes took after his father's. He needed to let the collateral families know that the spirit of their native country had been restored. The two of them continued to practice, ending with Myers on the ground. Ethan told him to get back up, as his enemies wouldn't wait for him to stand. He then asked him if his resolve was weak. Myers replied that it absolutely was not. He stood back up again with a great amount of fighting spirit, and the two kept up their sword practice from morning to noon without a break. Hans the Chamberlain watched them from a distance, thinking Ethan was a scary man for training non-stop and beating his brother, whom he hadn't seen in ten years, to a bloody pulp. Hans decided to be on his best behavior and not get in their way from now on, especially towards the Grand Duchess, as they had a bad history. As she watched her siblings, she thought to herself that a lot of things had changed since Ethan's return. The servants had started working again after he had awoken, and the Grand Chamberlain's attitude had shifted. She asked Hans, the Chamberlain, what kind of conversation he had with Ethan that made everyone work so hard. Upon hearing this, he remembered the fearful memories of when Ethan had beaten him mercilessly. He thought to himself that if that was a conversation, he shouldn't be having conversations with the Archduke. Hans quickly changed the topic, apologizing to her and offering her a cookie. He suggested that since the weather was nice, it would be better to have a tea time with everyone. The Grand Duchess is wondering why he changed the topic. Hans secretly communicated with Baron Cargas to make a report. He informed him that Ethan was awake and already knew how to use mana. The Baron told Hans that there would be an elder meeting and he was confident that everything would go their way. The Baron promised to send secret money for Hans and ordered him to observe the Archduke. Hans thought to himself that it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and he decided to just observe how things went and side with whoever won. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door and called out to Hans, telling him that the two dukes' training was finished. Hans ordered the servant to get cold water and wet towels for them and to fully prepare tea time immediately. Myers blocked his brother's attack, which surprised Ethan. He thought it hadn't even been a few days since they started training and yet he was already getting used to his attacks. He decided to attack him once more, but again he blocked it. Myers was overjoyed when he managed to block his older brother's attack. Ethan thought that his brother had natural physique, stamina, persistence, and fast adaptation senses, and concluded that he may be able to face off against an official knight soon. After the training, Hans offered them towels to wipe off their sweat and told them he had prepared refreshments and they should go eat it. While they rested, Hans mentioned that the Baron had contacted him and told him to observe and report on Ethan's actions. He tricked the Baron to get some money. Ethan thought of this as a coincidence, as he needed money anyway. Hans told him that if he needed anything he could use the Baron's money. He could clearly see Hans' motives, yet it didn't matter because he planned to use him anyway. He ordered Hans to go to the town to buy training tools and told him the remaining money was his to keep. After hearing this, Hans ran off to town to buy the things Ethan had told him to. Ethan asked his brother how much he knew about their family's vision. Myers replied that he didn't know anything and was surprised that his older brother was aware of it. Myers then asked him if he had learned the vision from their father. He said that Myers needed to restore the glory of their family, 
and the start of that was to make the youngest son of the Ardens into a proper knight. He mentioned that the Ardens' vision was different from other families, and that Myers needed to have great resolve as well. He then asked him if he was ready to throw away all the mana he had gathered until now. Myers replied that he was ready, especially if it was for his brother and their family. The boy was knocking the door and calling out for Sir Wilden. He reported that the youngest lord had barged in and was causing a ruckus. Sir Wilden got up and inquired about the disturbance in the headquarters of the Red Scorpion, despite the lord's good behavior the day before. Two days prior, in the evening, Ethan had taught his brother a new breathing technique. He informed him that the family secret was based on the Black Flame and the basics of the Black Flame were contained within the breath of Black Flame breathing technique. Ethan further explained that, as a proper descendant of the Arden name, Myers must have the Black Flame. Upon hearing this, Myers pondered whether, if he went through the four steps of training, resonance, dissemination, circulation, and enlightenment, his mana's nature would completely change and become a Black Flame. In order to learn the new breathing technique, Myers emptied his mana hole, filled it with flames, and repeated the process. With the guidance of his brother, he successfully acquired the Arden's mana. Ethan informed his brother that it would be hard at first, but that he would feel a clear difference once the mana of flames completely settled in his body. He further told Myers that he would be able to finish the resonance within two months and instructed him to prepare, as they would have to go somewhere the following day. At the present time, Ethan, Myers, and Hans were standing in front of a building. Hans informed Ethan that this was the place where the Red Scorpion resided, and the group that had attempted to meddle with the youngest lord. Hans further mentioned that there was a rumor that the eldest one there used mana, but Ethan was not worried and ordered Myers to go for it. Myers readied himself and kicked the door open. He declared that they would pay for their crimes of insulting the Duke family, and proceeded to hit one of the men inside using a wooden sword. The others reacted immediately and surrounded him. Ethan and Hans were standing in the corner, watching him. Hans was worried while Ethan had a smile on his face. Ethan thought that Myers had gotten a lot stronger in the last few days from training, yet lacked a bit of confidence, so he had brought him there even though it was dangerous. The man attacked while Myers was wide open, managing to hit him. However, Myers had taken the attack on purpose as he knew that if he had dodged it, he would have had to give up his advantageous spot and become vulnerable. Ethan saw Meyer's decision and praised him, then asked Hans, he's doing well, what do you think, Hans? Hans thought to himself that it was scary, his brother had just been hit with a sword. Sir Wilden shouted to stop right now, and asked Myers what was the meaning of this. He stopped what he was about to say when he saw Ethan looking at him. He remembered what his brother had told him and realized that it was the Archduke. He then asked Ethan if he was the one that had broken his brother's arm, to which Ethan replied, you know well, is there something you wanted to say? Sir Wilden thought that Ethan was arrogant and he wanted to kill him right then and there, but he had to be patient and discuss the matter with the Baron first. He told Ethan to wrap up the issue about the brothers and said that, although they had taken more damages, he would be considerate of the Duke family's reputation and let things go. Ethan grinned, thinking to himself that they were the ones that had ruined his brother, yet he was speaking as if he was being nice. He said to Myers that these bastards were trash and there was no saving them, and that they would need to cripple a lot of them to teach them a lesson. Sir Wilden warned Ethan that he would have to intervene if he did not stop, to which Ethan only responded with a dare. After that, Ethan exerted red mana on his hand, which Wilden saw and alerted to. He remembered the rumors about the Arden family's mana burning like flames and thought that those were merely exaggerated rumors and there was no way he would be scared of him. Wilden released his technique, which Ethan saw and thought to be familiar. He then attacked Ethan, but Ethan dodged it with ease, calling him a foolish bastard and bombarding him with punches until he fell down. After defeating him, he asked him who he had learnt the mana breathing technique from, to which Wilden did not answer. Ethan threatened him that if he wasn't going to talk, he would have to make him talk. Wilden then said to wait and informed him that the Baron Cargas had taught him the technique. Upon hearing this, Ethan thought to himself, Cargas? Up next, Ethan and his family must face the ultimate challenge as they battle for their freedom and their future. With the odds stacked against them, Ethan must summon all of his strength and courage to win the fight and bring his family closer together. Part 2 will be released tomorrow. That's it for today. See you next time. If you like this Manhua recap, leave a like, share it in your social medias and don't forget to subscribe for more manga, 
Manhua Recaps, where MC is reincarnated or reincarnation. Thanks for watching.